Today we're going to cover why we've chosen to use solar and what were the issues that we've tried to resolve, um, what's supported when you use solar, um, what issues there are because we've moved from a kind of transactional model to an eventually consistent model, and that makes some big differences to, in what you can expect the behavior to be from Alfresco, and it means that certain things um, are not suited. We'll have a quick guide to the configuration, the setup, and how you might go about migrating your existing system that uses Lucene um, to using solar with Alfresco. If you were to install Alfresco new today using the installer, then you'll get solar by default, and it will be set up for you via the installer, and you can just try it and go. So if you were to download the community version, set it up, you can kick off and see what you think to start with. So it's two different ways into there with the installer if you're going for new stuff, or you have to do some stuff yourself if you've got an existing Alfresco installation. And there's some additional tools for status and reporting, a whole bunch of improvements, and at the end I'll go through some demos to show you some of the things that have changed, some of the configuration stuff, and we'll see how long we have left, and I'll take questions at the end, if that's okay. So in our existing implementation that loses, uses Lucene, we have um, several issues that we'd like to resolve, or we did resolve, when moving to solar. The first one of those is that when we're using Alfresco in a cluster, each machine in a cluster currently has its own copy of the index, and each machine is tracking all of the changes and builds its own thing. And obviously that's duplicating lots of information, and it's also duplicating all the work to do the content transformation, pulling the metadata, tracking stuff, uh, and that's not good. You can configure things so that it's not quite so bad, but in the end, each individual member of that cluster runs a query where it is. And whilst we have made lots of efforts to make transactional consistency for one machine work, once you move into a cluster, there's no guarantee as to when any particular member of the cluster sees changes from anything else. Um, you expect it to be reasonably quick, but it doesn't have to be because they might not be in touch with each other and it depends when the transaction is seen by the database and everyone picks it up. Um, so we already have a kind of halfway house as a, for eventual consistency. We also wanted to address some issues with performance that we've had. And the main one of those is permission evaluation. Doing post-evaluation of permissions after you've evaluated a result set in Alfresco takes a long time, and we've gone to um, quite a lot of effort to push that evaluation into the query itself. And so the mission evaluation is done um, on the solar side, and the information it requires, obviously, to evaluate those things is actually held in the, in the solar index, and we send over just enough information as part of the query request to be able to resolve who owns the document, what ACLs it has, who can read it. So you don't care about update on the solar side, it's only can you read the information and should you be able to find it in a query. Um, in transaction indexing, which is done in the Lucene implementation of uh, uh, search support in Alfresco, um, takes some time. And obviously, if you're trying to load um, lots of documents or you're running lots of transactions that are relatively small and you're putting lots of information into the repository, then that actually becomes rate determining because after each transaction, it builds a little mini index, puts that to one side, then it has to merge all those mini indexes up into bigger ones, and all that management takes a lot of time. In the clustered world, when things are tracking, then there's kind of like a mixture of those little things happening, and in the background, a process chunking up those changes into batches of, say, 100 documents and building bigger chunks to the index. But again, that's all a performance hit, and that's where the improvements that John was talking about this morning um, are to be found. Obviously, when you load up documents with server in place, you get a much higher throughput because that in-transaction stuff is not happening. Uh, as John also mentioned, we currently have search embedded in the repository, and we've split that out so that you can scale solar independently. Uh, solar, I don't know if you know, is, a, is, is an Apache project, and they're working on their own cloud and scalability um, issues for, for solar and Lucene, including lots of things that we haven't worried about, like real-time search. We effectively have our own real-time search support that we've had historically, because it was never in Lucene, and for various reasons, we never were able to integrate it back in there. And they're doing lots of work now on real-time search. I mean, for example, the guys at 
Twitter are using Lucene um, to index the last week's worth of tweets. And they obviously have a requirement for real-time search. They want you to be able to search within 10 seconds of tweeting. Um, so they've put a lot of effort into adding significant support to Lucene to support some things that we would already kind of already have in our in-transaction stuff, but making the performance of that much better. So in the future, we can move back to that kind of model um, when we catch up with the relevant version of Solar. So again, scaling query independently. The guys in Solar are doing quite a lot of work to build their cloud repository, and they're kind of on the way, but they're not quite there in terms of having um, an architecture in which they can write to and build stuff. But they have got an architecture in which you can distribute query and do that kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of in the future, but we know it's coming, and we don't have to put the effort into make that side of Alfresco um, scalable. We have kind of like a short-term scale scaling solution, but the kind of whatever it is, 12-month-ish kind of view may be that to go to the solar cloud, but it depends on how, how they progress. And not everybody wants Alfresco in the cloud. So, you know, the same things apply for like a smaller clustered setup. Another issue that we've had via support is how we deal with cross-locale support. And whilst this is not strictly related to solar, whilst we're moving to solar, we can take advantage of the fact that you have to rebuild your index to get the support for solar. And as we do that, we can make some improvements in general to what we do. And one of those is to support cross-language support and a better kind of centralized um, locale, independent way of querying across languages. And the other thing that's happened as a side effect is that um, search has now turned into a subsystem, um, like authentication is now a subsystem, and has been for a long time. Um, search is now in that same category, and it means you can configure search on the fly. In the past, if you wanted to reconfigure the Lucene um, integration, you have to shut the server down and change whatever you want and restart. Now it's a subsystem. You can actually switch between Solar and Lucene, you can configure, change, make changes to Lucene and have them applied, and it will take the subsystem down and bring it back up with your changes applied. And every time it comes back up, it does the kind of checks we now do at the beginning where it checks the consistency of the index and might do a rebuild if you've asked it to in the configuration. So there's quite a lot of work going on as part of the solar configuration, and there are some other benefits that have come as a result. So... What's supported? Well, at the moment, we only index two bits out of Alfresco, and that's the spaces store, and that's where all the um, site information is, all the document repository is. And we also index the archive store, so you can look for things that you've kind of like put in the archive store prior to actually deleting them. So those two bits are the things you can query. How you can query them is exactly the same as it is now. So we support the Lucene query language, Alfresco FTS, um, we support the CMIS query language. The only slight modification is that we kind of have two CMIS uh, query language supports at the moment, one for the original um, implementation and the second one for the open CMIS improvements that we've made. And the solar CMIS query only supports the open CMIS one. And that won't affect anybody much, only in the sense that um, the open CMIS one is slightly more strict. So if you'd stuck to the spec, you'll have no problem. If you were a bit more sloppy and you decided you could do things like allow the um, case of your types to not match exactly what you've specified, then you might have some minor fix-ups to do. But other than that, you shouldn't notice any difference, and you can use all the query languages that you're used to. And they've all been integrated into Solar, and the parsing and all that happens on the Solar side. However, what you can't do is query against the WECM stuff that's based on AVM. The WECM stuff based on the new stuff, the web quick start, you can use Solar with, uh, but AVM we haven't integrated with. It requires um, another set of APIs and tracking stuff to be implemented, which we, we haven't done and probably aren't going to do. And we don't index or track all stores from the Solar side. The configuration is there to extend, and you potentially can do that, but at the moment we wouldn't necessarily support that because there are some things just to tidy up. We don't support um, multi-tenant operations at the moment. However, we kind of have already done the work as part of the cloud um, 
integration with solar. So while multi-tenant isn't in 4.0, it is in the cloud. So it's already there. It just hasn't gone back into the, the main code base yet. And so there's a, there's a co-mingled model for multi-tenancy, um, which basically filters the two tenants apart. And in the cloud, we will move away from that to individual tenants and all sorts of ways of splitting up um, on sharding the information that we hold in the index. Uh, records management, whilst records management will still work, it's arguable that you are not certified because the index is eventually consistent. It means you don't see the information as you should do when you're carrying out operations like making things cut off or are, you know, records going through their state. Um, so I would say it's not, not for records management, but it may be down to you guys to decide whether you're happy with that or not. So, just to be clear, solar is tracking Alfresco. Previously in the Lucene world, Alfresco was driving information into the index as things changed, and now solar is looking to see what's changed and periodically pulling that information and trying to catch up, which is really like the, the clustered world. Eventual consistency means that, yeah, it may be tracking, but it's not guaranteed to be up to date. How far behind it is, depends on what the load is and what kind of transformations you did. In the Lucene world, we did a kind of two-stage indexing approach. We did the metadata at the end of the transaction and the content, if it happened to be very, very easy to do and wasn't going to take very long. Um, if not, there's a background process that went through and re-indexed documents. And again, that's wasting time because it, you don't really want to pull the information twice and update stuff and delete documents. In the solar world, it tracks and it will do the transformation as it goes. So it's not indexing twice but that process is longer because of the transformations included in the time. So overall, it's faster, but you might see it lag further behind because it's not doing the work twice. There's still the same issue with kind of like transactions can take some time to commit and others might be put into the index before some. And we have that kind of worrying about things missing for an hour or so like you might have in the clustered world. And Alfresco's, well, the solar side is configured to track two cores, as I said, the spaces in the archive store. Effectively, in the solar side, there's an index for everything you want to track out of Alfresco as a coherent unit. And it's possible to extend that and track some other stores. Um, in the simplest way, that's fine. You have to do quite a lot of configuration. You have, would have to dig into quite a lot of XML configuration on the solar side. And quite a lot of detailed stuff in changing the subsystem on the Alfresco side. And one of the things subsystems aren't so good at is allowing you to change the XML configuration that supports them. So you'll probably be better off adding your own solar subsystem and that. There's quite a lot of work to go and um, redo that, kind of extend that structure as it stands now. And obviously we intend to make that easier in the future, but at the moment there is that limitation about extending and indexing additional cores. So what does eventual consistency actually mean? Well, there are six parts to eventual consistency, or you can think of it that way. One is that there are models in Alfresco that can change. And obviously the solar index needs to understand those models to know how to index those fields, that some things are date and not text, for example, to make sure you can search for it correctly. So it has to sync that information and pull it from Alfresco. So the first thing it does when it goes to see if anything's changed is to see if any of the models have changed. Part of the dynamic model stuff we added in a while ago, there's a, a checksum. You can tell whether models have changed. It doesn't have to pull stuff it doesn't need to. Um, the second phase is to check whether any ACLs have changed and any explicit readership rights for the owner, for users, and groups have been altered. And that information is stored um, in the index as well as the index for documents. So it contains several pieces that have to be wired together to enforce the security. Um, after the ACLs, there's the metadata for each tran It effectively tra tracks transactions in the same way that the cluster does. It pulls the metadata over for the nodes for everything in the transaction, and it pulls the content over for those nodes. And as part of the metadata, it includes who owns that node. And there's a little bit of working out to do whether you know, it's a 
defined by who created it or there's actually some ownership information on there. And the other bit of part of consistency is making sure that you can look things up by structure. So historically, all the document management people want to know about path and put things in particular places. We put site information, for example, in particular paths and constrain queries based on location rather than tagging, which you, know, you could argue we should do, but path is there and is used to constrain queries a lot and we need to support that. And that gives us minor headaches, um, not really in terms of the implementation, but because of our integration with Lucene and so on. So the reason why we won't be upgrading the um, embedded Lucene implementation is because our path implementation there is actually not compatible with the later versions of Lucene and it would be a big pain to update it and means that we wouldn't put any effort into or we'd put less effort into moving solar forward um, and adding stuff that we can, we can do there in the clustering world or whatever. So whilst we could do that, it's not top of the list. And the implementation in solar has changed and it's considerably faster than the implementation um, in Lucene. Uh, and that's because we can take advantage of several things that we've never done before, like query caching, which our Lucene implementation doesn't actually have, but the Solar one comes with that stuff for free. Um, so it's another reason we move forward to Solar. We don't have to implement query caching and, um, and how we go about that and how long for and how to cache for different paging strategies and that kind of stuff. That's all there for us. So to summarize that in a high-level architecture diagram, Previously on the repository side, you, have seen, well, you, you would have seen a solar index on there, and now there's just a content store, and there's a database store. And solar is sitting off in its own little world with its indexes per core, and it's uh, asynchronously polling Alfresco, pulling back the information I mentioned, updating the index, and then queries from the Alfresco side go through to the repository, and it has in there a configuration to redirect it to the correct URL on the solar side for the particular search language that you've got, adds in information about who is, who the user is, what groups they're a member of, it sends it over to solar, it evaluates that, and sends back the search results. And now for things like um, paged queries, those search results are cached on the solar side, so if you ask for page number two for a query, it will be much faster than it has been with a Lucene implementation, for example. So you get a whole bunch of kind of things for free moving to solar that we didn't have with Lucene. So I just want to briefly go over how you set things up and how you would migrate and where that gets you. Uh, so solar is a web app in its own right. It comes as a zip and we make a kind of solar distribution which has been slightly modified for a couple of bugs mainly to do with how you back up the index and when it first starts up. Uh, and they're kind of like just patching things that already exist in the, in the solar bug list. So you need to extract that zip, put it somewhere. Um, if you do that via the installer, it'll put that in the Alfresco data directory for you. Alfresco and solar communicate over SSL. Uh, so we would ship with some default certificates, and you'd get those all set up again if you used the installer. I would recommend to you that if you're doing it you know, if you are going to install solar for real, then you want to change those certificates and manage your own. And so there's some pain in setting that up. But unfortunately, you have to go through that because we can't give you certificates to set things to go. So you just have to do it. It's only once, and so just make sure you don't lose them. Uh, the instructions for how to do that are all in the um, zip or on, the, on the wiki from Alfresco. Um, you can talk to Solar Direct, and we'll do that um, later on to show you some of the examples. And again, you need to generate the right certificate to put in your browser to talk to it as well. There's some per core configuration that you need to do in the Solar side after you've extracted that zip, but that's mainly just to define where your data is going to be stored for your index. Um, there are some other things you can configure, like how often it tracks and um, how much, how many tokens in the document it indexes and all that kind of stuff which you'd be familiar with from the Lucene side. Um, but they probably have better defaults than they have in the, in the past. And again, if you go with the installer, you get a default installation. And that's probably the easiest place to start if you're thinking of migrating, just to check it out and look what's there. Okay, 
So I've said that there's now a bunch of subsystems. There are currently two, a Solar and a Lucene subsystem, and you can interchange them um, without restarting Alfresco. So if you want to check that your solar is in a state where you can use it live in Alfresco, um, you can, and you don't have, you're not making a cliff edge decision. You can go backwards. It's not that you've lost your Lucene indexes. And there's um, JMX and Share Admin to configure and look at that, and we'll have a look at that later as part of the demo. And the Lucene subsystem via JMX um, exposes every property you could possibly want to set. It's pr probably quite daunting. If you go via the Share Admin API, that list of things you can change has been cut down to kind of like the sensible set that most people would want to use. And so I'd advise you to go that way rather than the JMX way, uh, as we seem to be moving towards that kind of in share admin configuration and away from the JMX stuff. But if you're using that, it's still there. And there are also some other um, JMX reporting bits for solar itself and for the individual indexes that are part of um, Alfresco and solar. You can do things like back up the index via JMX, or you can check its state. And previously, we had some functionality to check uh, the Lucene index didn't miss any transactions as part of clustering and that kind of stuff. The same functionality is there for solar, and the same functionality to fix it up is there, except that it's now much easier to do. There's a single URL. You can just say fix, and it will go and do the um, scan to see if anything is wrong. And if it is, it will fix it up automatically for you. Not that I'm saying there should be anything wrong, but you know, there's always going to be a bug somewhere along the line that catches on, on the hop. Um, hopefully not, but you never know. And there's a bunch of properties that go with um, the subsystems that you can use to configure things. So the properties that you used to change in repository.properties for, um, sorry, in the global repository.properties for Lucene, have now moved into a kind of subsystem and they're there. You can still set them in your, as, you, as you normally have done in the past. So, if you're upgrading and you want to migrate to solar, how are you going to do it? Well, the first thing is you can carry on using Lucene when you upgrade. And you can configure solar to track at the same time whilst using Lucene. Um, so you can bring your system up, it upgrades, you're using Lucene, everything's good. You can then go and configure the, you, know, you can go and deploy the zip, set it all up, configure it set it to track Alfresco, do the configuration, and it will start to track the information. Alfresco out of the box will support solar tracking unless you go and specifically turn it off as part of configuring the Lucene or the solar subsystem. Uh, and then you can go and use the monitoring tools, which I'll cover a bit later, um, to look to see whether, how up-to-date it is. Obviously, if you've got a million documents, or a large number of documents, the solar index is going to take some time to build, and you can go and look and see what state it's in at any time and decide when you, you're ready to change. Right, so I'll cover the JMX stuff in the examples and the how to go to direct so I'm fixing things. So I'm going to dig into the improvements uh, a little bit. So the path support we had before in the Lucene index meant that we had to do a kind of two-stage query. We had to find the first bit of the path, and then link the nodes at the end. Um, the solar version of that um, does it all at once. The implementation is very similar, um, but it's much easier. It doesn't mean we have to do more work in pushing information down onto every document about all its paths um, and use those at query time. So we have taken some hit in there, but that's worked out as part of the indexing, and it's no harder to calculate those paths and build kind of like the links for the between the leaves and the, and the um, directories than it is to actually build them all at once. So there's no extra in load on the repository. The load is on when you change the name of a directory, and as a result, all the paths beneath it change. The amount of work to push things down onto the objects that have changed is higher because everything has a path rather than just the directories as things stand in the old implementation. However, I don't think that's a, that's a big deal. It's not very often you change like, the name of company home, for example. And so that path implementation is considerably faster, as I said. It's probably an order of magnitude, maybe even more 
quicker to do paths. Uh, if you did slash slash star as a path on the old Lucene implementation, it's going to find all of the directories that potentially match there and then go and do another query to link in all of the children. And that can take a long time. In the solar implementation, it doesn't need to do that. And that query will come back in probably sub-second or better. If it's cached as part of another query, all the kind of like path bits of an expression are cached in their own right. So if you write a complex query and it contains like two path expressions, for example, they will ca cache those path expressions. If then somebody changes their query and does something else, re but it reuses the path bits, it will reuse them. So in the queries we use to constrain to um, the contents of a share site, for example, that path gets executed loads and loads of times. So we'll be caching that path bit of that query, and so your share performance will be better because it's not evaluating that path every time. So the access evaluation at query time, we do quite a lot of work to maintain um, a cache on the solar side that relates um, some documents that describe who can read an ACL and relate that ACL to the actual document that there is in our fresco. And the implementation splits that up into kind of like four, four documents. We have to link some of those bits together. And we have an exhaustive cache that represents that link. So whilst we're doing a join when we evaluate access evaluation, the actual join, the way to look up the documents that you can read, is done in memory and is very quick. And so where, again, where you might have had 20 million documents in there, and as a result, you kind of like go through this iterative process where you see maybe the first 10 documents, if you only see 10% you know, of them, the first time you query, the next time round, some of it's cached, and you see slightly more and you get inconsistent query results. Because we do it all up front on the solar side and it evaluates it exhaustively, you never get inconsistent results from that unless things are due to um, eventual consistency. But it won't come back with a different number of results against an unchanged index as you query and query again. It solves um, another issue that we've had raised via support. Uh, and again, that evaluation is much faster than it was before. While stuff was cached, the caching of a query in Lucene is actually very efficient in that we know what documents apply for a particular authority. So like we cache path queries individually, we cache the bits of the authority enforcing query in their own right as well. So individual groups and individual users, the documents that they can read are cached individually. So if lots of users share the same group, the query that evaluates who can read the documents for that group is already going to be cached and reused. So cross-language, cross-locale support all comes down to having a consistent way of indexing something independent of the locale. So in the current implementation, we don't have that. If you were to try and search in French for an English document, then the stemming is different, and it won't match. Um, we have had some issues about losing the locale or not having the locale of a document, and you know, it disappears. And you end up with your document changing locale when you didn't expect it. And those things can't happen anymore. And we have a consistent way of tokenizing for cross-language support. So we have two bits in the index, one to support um, indexing for the locale, so French will be there with a French stemming, but there'll also be another set of information in the index to support cross-language support that is tokenized in a way you can define in the configuration and has nothing to do with French. But it does kind of have the best, lowest common denominator tokenization you can get from solar. Uh, the other part of cross-language locale support is sorting. And the Lucene index that we have now is not good for cross-locale support. Well, it's okay for cross-locale support, um, but there are some issues in that if you were to try and sort um, multilingual text fields, for example, according to French, it doesn't know how to put the, if you only have a document that only has a German entry, it doesn't know where to put that in the field. So when you sort in the solar implementation, it's actually doing a bit of extra work to work out which of the fields in solar um, match the locale best, and it uses that one for the sorting. So you will get consistent sorting even across documents which only have a multilingual field in one of the languages. And previously that wouldn't have worked. Uh, it uses the same kind of functionality for normal text fields using the locale of the document. Uh, 
and again, that's much better than it has done in the past, and it's been indexed to support sort efficiently, and that will be um, much quicker than it was in the past as well, as it did a kind of post sort in Lucene for those kind of things. Again, I've also mentioned the um, query caching that Solar comes with us, comes with, and we also have faceting in Solar, which is the ability to give you some summary of the results that you've got in a query and how those results group, you know, for example, by color, or in our case, probably by document type would be more, uh, more typical, and you can drill, potentially drill into that, that way. So we have the first basic implementation of faceting in the um, Java API. Um, it's not exposed in the UI yet, um, but it will come. The only place it's actually used for us is in kind of like the top tags part of some um, implementations for the category service. I can take questions at the end if that's okay. Yep. So as I said, there's a cross-language tokenization that's configurable, and we'll go and look at this particular example uh, that I've got here, the kind of mixed case name with letters, numerals, and separated with uh, punctuation. And previously, we would have had a quite weak support for that cross-language search. And we now have, we use the solar word delimity filter factory, which basically means you can split things on case change, you can split things at punctuation and on change from uh, letters to numerals. And so it puts some extra tokens in to allow those bits of searching. And because it's um, fixed across all languages, it means that you can search for big in French or big in German or English and you will find that document, um, whereas you wouldn't have done before unless you'd done some special stuff for tokenization. Okay, again, if it's in French and you have to put that in, it'll also do whatever that stems to in French, um, which is probably exactly as it says, but it'll just be a single token probably with the, um, the hyphenation thrown away I haven't checked. But, um, it would then not be easy to find it with in, in English, for example. But Solar has extra support to do that. I've covered the sort, so I won't go into that again. Uh, some other new stuff that applies both to Solar and to Lucene is some uh, extra ways of controlling how things are indexed. So previously, there was things that you didn't want to index, and you didn't really have a choice. And now there is an aspect you can apply to any document, and you control how it's indexed. Um, so if you add the CM index control aspect, you can then go and set some properties, which are both true by default to completely enable indexing for the, for the document or to enable or disable indexing for the content parts of that document. So you can now have documents that only the metadata is indexed. Um, so the easiest way to kind of implement something like that is to put a, a rule on a folder and if it comes in, you add the aspect and if you don't want to index it, then you can say you don't want to index it. Um, so this is one part of indexing control. There's one that I've just realized I haven't talk, and that's to do with um, uh, the data model. So we now have an option in the data model that says, if I query for content, um, I've got a subtype of content, should I include it in the results? And this was added to do the CMS query support, where there are some kind of like documents that shouldn't be found if you search for the parent type, things like thumbnail. Um, so if you search for CM content um, in Alfresco, it won't find the thumbnail unless you go and specifically search for thumbnails. So you can also control indexing via some properties on your um, types. Okay, um, so that's one not to forget. So the other thing that's happened as part of the Solar implementation is that we've actually removed some dependencies from the repository on using Lucene and moved those queries to database queries where appropriate. Again, John mentioned that in his... Uh, talk earlier on. So obviously there are some bits of share that we don't want to be affected by eventual, eventual consistency. And we want to get the results back as you would expect straight away. And the database knows that information. So the way to do it is to query against the database. Now a database schema is not ideal for all queries and not all queries have migrated to, um, to use in the database but the ones that can have done. And the ones that are left really only are okay with eventual consistency. So 
where is Solar and Lucene used? Well, it's used in the advanced search pages and the search pages, obviously. It's also used in some of the filters you can apply in those, in those um, pages. It's used in um, looking up things that have been tagged. It's not used for the roll-up of tags. There's some special support to actually roll that up in a site-specific way. Um, but if you go and say, what has this tag, then that's using um, Solar or Lucene to answer the question. And if you use Lucene, you'll get um, consistency like the database. And if you use Solar, you'll have eventual consistency for those results. Now, there's some use for category faceting, as I said, but I don't think you'd really be exposed to that. It's just the implementation of the category service on, on the Solar side that uh, does that. Um, in Share, things like the recently modified sites use Solar, so documents that have changed, the documents I'm editing, that kind of stuff is still um, supported using Solar and will be eventually consistent. And some of the searches for people and groups and sites have been changed to use the database, but there are some with wildcard patterns that aren't so good against the database, and they will um, go to using Solar or Lucene. So quite a lot of the time you'll get a consistent result, and sometimes you won't, depending on the pattern that you use, or whether you add any other things on there to say, I want to find somebody by name, and I want them to be in a particular company. The more complex careers that you add, they'll end up going to Solar as well. So I've now got some, because we've chosen Solar, there are some things that we'll get for free in the future, and I'll just come back from going to the um, uh, Lucene Solar Conference in Barcelona. And there's lots of work happening for Solar Cloud implementation, and there are people um, going quite heavily into the Solar Cloud stuff with Hadoop and building indexes in parallel and all sorts of uh, fancy stuff. We'll get there. We're not quite on the right version of Solar to do that yet. The improvements that come with uh, Solar 3.4 and 4.0 around performance are actually quite staggering. So the one thing that you know, I'm looking forward to is um, wild carding queries and that kind of stuff with finite state automata that go, I know they say 50,000 50, times quicker. Uh, and that makes wild carding things much faster, and in particular things like Alfresco being able to give you auto-suggestion and that to be very quick indeed. Okay, so... Those things you can look forward to. It's not for me to decide when they'll be. If you want to go and batter Mike, then you can make him put them in the program. Oh, there he is. There you go and batter him. <laughs> Can't see you for the lights. <laughs> uh, and the other stuff Solar comes with is um, some um, support for querying location and geo stuff. As again, Mike demonstrated that we can now have that information um, in our fresco as part of loading stuff up. We can query for it. The Solar support is there. We don't have to put special support into Lucene to implement ourselves. It's all done. And they've, the guys at Solar are working quite hard to make that more efficient in terms of ordering things and querying things and not doing the work twice to answer those questions. So I was going to do some demos next, but I'll take questions and demos and mix them all together and do that for the next 10 or so minutes, if that's okay. So... I'm quite happy to take questions now if we have some. Where do you think you're going to take the um, Well, the, the, our UI designer is quite keen to expose them, as you'd expect in any kind of search style thing you'd find on a you know, like consumer website out there. Um, what things you can facet on? Well, at the moment, we just have the simple facet stuff for kind of normal fields. So you can do that now. If you want to go and write the kind of like customized share to do it, and use the query stuff. I'm sure you can. You have to do lots of work at the moment. It's not like wrapped up nicely to go all through the stack, but it will be there. So there's faceting for simple fields. There's kind of date-based faceting, which obviously is maybe you want your recent documents to facet by today, last week, that kind of stuff. You can do that kind of faceting. We have to do some work to, to do that. Um, and the other kind of faceting is kind of like ad hoc. You can actually define what you want to facet by a whole bunch of queries, and then it actually runs that query and works out what matches that and facets according to the result. So those are kind of the three main ways of doing faceting, and one of those we've got in there. Uh, and mostly it's, well, it, it's a kind of query time configuration, asking for what you want faceting. So it's not a huge great deal of work to add support for it. It's just about what information goes over how do you wrap it up and present it nicely through the stack so in the end the UI can show it. In terms of how it's going to be designed, they won't let me anywhere near that.
Is the Lucene um, engine configured by default when you install 4.0 out of the box? If you install using the installer, you will get solar. If you install any other way, I believe you're going to get the Lucene index. Uh, and that's so that if you were to upgrade, you wouldn't be like switched to solar without knowing it. So it's only, it's only the installer that's doing a special change to the, to the variable. So you'll be able to monitor how far behind the index is in production, not just during loads? Yep, so I might as well go to the demos. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's two bits to this. So the first bit I'll show you is the, I don't know whether you've seen, seen in the new stuff that uh, there is an admin screen. Of course it would do, wouldn't it? And now in that admin screen, there's a, there's a search section in there. And as I said, there's kind of two bits to this. There's a search manager, which basically allows you to change which implementation is in there. And there's an edit off, this, edit off at the side here. So you could actually switch live using this and drop down and pick which one you want. I'm not going to do that just now because um, I want to demonstrate the other things on there. So there's also kind of like the individual search subsystems that are available. And the uh, Lucene one on there has some configuration on there. And the Solar one should tell you what state it's in but doesn't as yet. And so the way to find out currently what state it's in is to go to the JMX console. And if you look in there under normal stuff for subsystems, hopefully you can see that, not too bad. There's a configuration section and under there is all the subsystems like the authentication and under there is search, and under there is the um, solar subsystem, and there's a bunch of attributes on there. And if you'd go and click on there, there's um, two indexes I said in, in the solar implementation, one for Alfresco and for the archive, and one for the spaces store. And so the kind of lag, how far behind it is, is there. So you can go via JMX and look up those properties, and we'll expose those through the share admin UI as well. Okay, so I could go and dump stuff in there. And if you, if you were to go and um, load stuff up by FTP or whatever in multi, is that too small to see? I, I've not worked out how to readjust the size on the JMX stuff, I'm afraid. And so there's the other bit of the, so that's the sub subsystem which exists in its own right. And the other bit of config, um, JMX control you can have is on the indexes themselves. There's a solar indexes section. And here there's an entry for each of the indexes. And if you go and look in what there is there, there's kind of like the Lucene sort, sort of solar state of the index. Uh, but more important is there's a bunch of operations and a bunch of attributes. So the attributes. Uh, don't include the state. You have to go and look at the other configuration beam. But these ones allow you to do things like back up the index, um, to check and fix the index, to get a report as to what the state of the index is, if there's anything missing, any leaves missing, that kind of stuff, like you could do with the old Lucene index. What was that unit of measure for? Was it seconds or was it number of transactions? It, it's uh, there there are quick. two in there, just two. Uh, so in the go back to the attributes, there's, there are two entries. There's a lag in seconds, and to make life marginally easy for you, there's a kind of um, a duration, an XML standard duration. So if you, you don't have to do the maths to work out how many hours or minutes or whatever you are behind. Okay. And to be clear, the, the version store is not included. That's right. The version okay. store isn't indexed in the normal index. It's not part of the Lucene index either. We turned off index in the version store quite a while ago. So how, if any way, does this affect backup and restore of Alfresco? Sorry, I couldn't. How does this affect backup and restore of Alfresco? OK, so well, it's two things. One, one is you can always rebuild your solar index. and. If you want to, well, you could have two instances of solo set up, and they could both track Alfresco. 
So you can have two master indexes for solar and you can replicate your index if you wish to. Uh, in terms of backing it up, you can back up using um, the JMX console. Uh, you will be able to back up using a cron expression like you can with the current Lucene index as an open bug to fix that, which is on my list of things to do next week. Um, so there will be an index you can go back to with solar and start from and um, track from, just like you can go back to the kind of Lucene implementation and start from there. You know, the Lucene implementation has a backup, and you can put that backup in place and bring Lucene up, and it will fix itself up to the current position. So, yeah, there are some minor changes to that. Um, kind of the nice thing is because it's separated out, you don't actually want to drive necessarily some of the backup bits from the Alfresco side. So you can be able to kind of like schedule when it happens. Um, but Solar itself includes backup as part of its um, replication um, support, and it backs that stuff up locally to where your solar installation is. Hopefully that answers your question. I was just wondering if there's documentation available yet um, on, on the wiki or anywhere else. Um, there's documentation on the wiki for most of this stuff. The only thing I haven't demonstrated, which is on the, on the wiki, is the kind of like going to solar direct to get state. So if you, so there's no reason why you can't go direct to solar if you have the right stuff in there. So there are things like being able to get a summary report of um, where your, where, what your index state is and how far behind it is. You can get that outside of Alfresco as well. You can go direct to solar and it will give you back the I'm no seconds behind and uh, the duration and stuff. In terms of, yeah, there is a wiki page called of, you'll find it if you search for Alfresco wiki and solar, uh, and it's all on there, and the documentation team are also doing the documentation side of things for the enterprise product as well. Uh, in a cluster environment, so where this solar service will be running? So if I were in a cluster environment, if I have two nodes, so where will this solar service will be running? And the solar service can go wherever you like. So if you've set, a two, set up a two-node um, Alfresco structure, that's just for the repository and, and share. The solar index is a web app in its own right and can sit either on the same machines as the, as the Alfresco um, web app, or it can go somewhere completely different, and you can configure the stuff to talk together. And it's up to you to decide if you want to put a load balancer between the two, if you want the two Alfresco nodes with a node balancer in front and solar, maybe with two, two masters, as I said, you can configure, you can unzip it twice, configure it on two machines to track back to that Alfresco cluster and go through the node balancer on the query side. You can configure Alfresco to go through to solar and split across those two masters if you wish to do it that way. And there will be only single set of indexes. Like Lucene, you have uh, th then you would end up with two duplicates, but then you could scale your you can scale your Alfresco thing separately. You could then have a five node cluster running against a two node solar cluster, or you could decide that um, you've put your solar indexes on a different class of machine, and you have just one solar index and you back it up, and you're happy to be kind of like an hour behind and you schedule your backup. And if you want to, you just if you lose the machine, you just bring it back up. Um, as part of the D Lucene work, one of the other things is that. Um, share will work pretty well without the index there. That's one of the things we've tested is that what is its dependency on the index and how does it behave if it's not there? So if solar isn't there, it's not the end of the world necessarily. It is if you want to find things by search and certain things, then yeah, it's not there. But if you're prepared to take a five-minute hit whilst it comes back up and you get a kind of like one hour out of date index, it's conceivable your index might have been that far out of date anyway. It depends what you've been doing. Um, so it's, it's kind of like it's an operation decision for you as to whether you want to set things up in that way. Even if you go to like the solar cloud, you've got to have at least two copies of the data. So whilst it's not ideal for like very small clusters with two, it kind of shows its benefits when you go to a bigger scale. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Um, yeah, my question is about uh, uh, yesterday we were looking at having the possibility of having multiple data stores, multiple uh, stores. Um, for instance, one in a network and uh, 
a faster, let's say, local hard drive. Uh, I was wondering if Solar was able to support all the separate repositories, and particularly, I am. I was wondering about the external um, uh, repositories. For instance, uh, if we could, if we have a network, uh, if it, that will be supported by Solar. So, are you asking me if you can index your network drive using Solar or? Uh, yes, not necessarily the whole network, but you ask you saying instance, you're using an enterprise search server, not just for Alpresco, but for other things potentially. Uh, I'm, let me tell you this this scenario that actually happened. Um, in a company I was consulting for, they bought uh, about a, a big data store. It was humongous, uh, uh, and it was extra fast. I think it had. I think it was actually a RAM disk, right. but it, it was very large. And obviously, they wanted to have very fast access to it. And the challenge was to, back then, put uh, uh, alfresco data, I mean, alfresco documents there. But right. Back then, there were not multiple repositories supported. Uh, in this particular case, I was wondering if, for instance, Solar could support both the regular repository, the hard drive, and the server, and this uh, massive uh, memory. Uh, is server. the massive memory thing to do with Alfresco? Is it storing Alfresco data, or is it something else? That, that was the, the intention. It, it was not actually so done, I believe. The answer is it doesn't matter where you store the Alfresco um, content. Mm -hmm. The um, thing for performance in solar is where you store the solar indexes. Mm -hmm. So if you want higher performance for solar for that particular case, then you would have to store the solar indexes on the same kind of hardware, is what mm -hmm. I would imagine. Okay. So you'd have to store the solar But it, it will support Rams. both cases in any um, I think maybe I need to dig into it to answer the question. So maybe no, you can no, come no. and sit with me at lunch at a solar uh, search uh, query table. Yeah. <laughs> No, and no, basically, it, the, the question was if, if they, multiple places will be supported. At the uh, moment, Solar software. is just tracking one instance of Alfresco. Ah, there you go. But okay. there's no, well, because we only have those stores configured, there's no actual reason why we can't, for mm -hmm. a single Alfresco, sorry, a single Solar, track multiple Alfrescos. There's no technical reason why we can't do that. But mm -hmm. we don't do that at the moment. Maybe uh, that's the question. Uh, not actually. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think this is for version 4.0 uh, that we were supposed to have multiple uh, repositories or uh, linked, using links instead of uh, actually storing the data in the repository. That was my understanding. I think. Uh, yesterday there was a, in the training, we, we look at having the capability of having multiple, let's say, data dot beer, uh, we could have one in one local drive, or we could have another one, we could, we could have another one in addition, which could be a backup, for instance, a slower. Is this multiple content stores? Exactly. Right. Okay. If, content if, there's, if there's multiple stores. content stores, then that, that's fine. Okay. Because okay. Okay. it will pull the content from wherever it is. All right. Okay. okay. Have we Thank got you. any more questions? I'm conscious that it's the lunchtime bell will go shortly. Sorry, the the access rights to the file. Yeah, is, it, it, it knows who owns the file. It knows who can read yes. particular files. Yes, yeah. it evaluates that as part of the query. Is that built into the solar indexes, yes. or is it outside, like uh, what it was with Lucy? Um, it's built into the solar index. It's, it's evaluated on the solar server. The information it requires to answer the question is all in the index. So, if I make a change uh, in the access rights, um, how how does that propagate? Is it propagated? Well, until uh, uh, well. It won't be reflected immediately if you're going to change who can read a document. But as soon as the tracker kicks in, it'll first, it first does the models and it then does the, the access rights. So it will then enforce the access rights as soon as that's 
gone in. So you, can, you see your kind of like version of the index as it was, and at some point it'll update and apply those ACLs. So there, 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 there can be a window where you've, say, removed Andy as a read on a document, but I can still go and read it because the index hasn't updated its state. Does that? Yeah, you won't be able to do anything. You won't be able to find if you, you can find it in the query results, but when you go and actually try and get it, you won't get it. It's only the search bit that will potentially do that, and it's likely to filter it out anyway because when it goes through the things, it will say, does this thing exist? And for you, the answer is no. If you, if your group membership changes, that changes immediately. That's the, that's the information that's passed over with the query, what groups you belong to. That, that's not kind of like held in the solar side. It's only about what rights people have on a particular ACL. Okay. Is, there any way to, um, is there any way to poke the, the uh, indexer and say, you know, yeah, usually it's okay to trail behind, but now I want you to get going? There isn't at the moment, no. Okay. But, Sounds like a useful thing to have. I mean, at the moment, it's a, it's a cron expression, and it will poke it every 15 seconds out of the box. Um, but it will only try and get up to, like, one or two seconds. It won't try and get right up to date, because there's likely to be no point in kind of, like, you know, doing stuff too aggressively. Any more questions? Okay, well, I'll see you at the search table for lunch. Thank you very much. Yeah.